I am a huge fan of the Nintendo 64, as I'm sure many of you out there are as well. But guys, that Nintendo 64 controller, not the greatest thing on the market. It's actually pretty uh, bad in many respects. There's not really one way to hold the controller, and in many instances, the controller itself just kind of ages terribly. You see, at the time, it was a very cool controller to have, but we got far better controllers in the years to come. The Super Nintendo controller and the NES controller are hallmarks in classic designs, but the N64 controller really hasn't stood the test of time. But there's a company out there named Hori, and they thought the same way I did that the controller could have probably been improved a bit, and they decided to do it. This is the Hori Pad Mini 64, and it is the best controller ever made for the Nintendo 64. When the folks at Hori were designing this controller, they did something pretty smart. They took everything that worked with the initial design of the N64 and compressed it down into a much smaller form factor. And the end result is something that kind of looks like a miniature GameCube controller, which is pretty awesome seeing as how I really like the design of the GameCube controller. Now before we go any further, let's take a closer look at the original design for the Nintendo 64 controller. Now this controller is pretty iconic. I grew up with it and I got used to using it over the years, but it really isn't the best design out there. See, most people that play games usually have their left or right hand around this part here so that you can move around the joystick and hit the Z button pretty easily. But that's kind of unfortunate because no matter which hand you use to put in the center, you're always going to be missing either touching these buttons or the D-pad, simply because you're holding it this way or you're holding it this way, making it a lot more difficult to reach all the buttons in the other areas of this controller. That kind of sucked because this design really made it unfortunate for developers. A developer would look at this controller and go, well, I guess the people that are going to be playing the game have to hold it this way or this way, so they have to design using either this side of the controller or that side. But when the Hori guys were designing their controller, they figured out a way to move everything all together at once, so it was a lot easier to use. And while at the same time improving this stupid thing too. The Hori Pad Mini 64 is a lot smaller than the original Nintendo 64 controller, and all the face buttons are a lot more compressed and closer together, but they did that for a reason. See, on the original Nintendo 64 controller, there really wasn't one way to hold it, but this one, there's only one way, and this way works far better than any other method for the initial Nintendo 64 controller's release. Now what I love about this is that the D-pad is kind of in a weird spot by first looks, but it actually is in a really smart spot because you can activate it and use it with both of your thumbs at any given moment, which is actually really nice because some games on this console really only utilized one or the other and never both input methods for directional pads. But what I love about the joystick on this is that the joystick itself is the GameCube variant of the joystick. At least that's what it feels like anyway. So it's a lot more precise and it doesn't really have a dead zone like you'd find off of older Nintendo 64 controllers or even new ones that you'd plug in and use after a couple of days, which eventually got that dead zone naturally. This controller is so much better in almost every single aspect that even the start button is a smaller rubber button that feels better than the original Nintendo 64 controller start button. And I know that's kind of awkward to say the start button is better than that one, but it just is. Another feature I absolutely love about this controller is they repositioned the Z button. In fact, they kind of redesigned the Z button. See, on the original N64 controller, it was sort of a trigger on the back of the thing, but on this one, they've offered one beneath the left and right shoulder buttons. Both of them, you get two Z buttons. And the reason they did that was because if you were a left-handed or a right-handed player, you just get to choose whichever you want to use now. Plus, if there's certain games out there where you have to quickly tap the Z button, it was a little bit more difficult to do that on the back of the controller. With this though, it's a lot faster. Sure, not every game out there needs that, but I think that's really cool. Like I said earlier, the joystick on this thing is far more improved compared to the original N64 joystick. It's got so much more precision and it's so much easier to actually control your games. But it does have an odd feature that I'm not quite sure actually gets utilized by the N64. This joystick can be pushed in like any other joystick from modern era game consoles. But what I can't figure out is how to use this with any N64 game. It doesn't really seem to do anything at all. But if you're out there and you're watching and you actually know how to use it, let me know. I'd be curious to find out exactly what you could do with that simple input method. I know I'm supposed to highlight some kind of criticism I have with this controller, something that just kind of didn't work, but honestly, I really couldn't find one. Best I could do was say that the shoulder buttons were kind of squishy, 
And even then, that's not a very serious criticism because they still worked a lot better than the original N64 shoulder buttons. So that's kind of strange. This controller is seriously that good. It is the most perfect controller ever released on the N64. One problem you might have is if you go out and try and find these things right now, they can cost upwards of $100 just for one, which is insane. But that's kind of how they go. These controllers are expensive and they're only gonna get more expensive as time goes on because they're better than the original N64 controllers that were ever released by Nintendo. It's not even up for a debate. If you compared every single feature of the original N64 controller release with this one, this one wins on every single front. In fact, even at its most basic functionality, the Rumble Pack works a lot better in this controller than it does with the original N64 controller. There's no wiggle or give, this thing just feels solid and flush. Which is crazy because you think that Nintendo would have done this better than Hori, but Hori just went the extra mile and made that work even better than Nintendo did. This controller is insane, and there's a reason why people want so much money for it. If you can find one of these and play any one of the games you've ever played on N64, they just work better. In some cases, I was playing games that I wasn't good at with the original N64 controller and found that I actually was pretty good at them with this controller setup and design. It's crazy. This cannot be a real thing, but it totally is. If you have any game out there for the N64 that you're a big fan of and you haven't played it with this controller, well, you probably never played the game for real before.